All right, so this week is all about rhythm, and we're going to be looking at some creative ways that you can play rhythm, some little embellishments and fill licks and things that you can add to really simple chord shapes. So none of this is complicated. This is all very simple, easy to follow along, slow tempo, uh, but it's designed to just give you a lot of new ideas. Uh, so the song we're going to be playing, the first part of it has three chords. We have an A, a B minor, and an E, three basic chords. And if you were to see those chords in a chord chart, uh, and somebody wanted you to jam along as a rhythm player, you might be inclined to play A, B minor, you know, or, you know, maybe you do a different strum pattern. But my point is you'd be playing the chords down in first position. Or maybe you're a little more adventurous and you play an A, a B minor, and an E. There it is. Uh, up in a higher position. But that's still not interesting. And to me, the interesting stuff happens when you can go you can start to play like a little melody line around those chords and when you hear that in context with a band it sounds so much more meaningful so that's what we're going to be looking at I have the lesson split into two parts in this video we're going to go over the first half if you'd like to learn the second half as well as download the tablature, the mp3 jam tracks, and the part 2 video, or have access to the part 2 video, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP395. Alright, so as I mentioned, the three chords we're going to start off with are an A, a B minor, and an E. And we're going to be staying in this general region of the neck for the first part, and then we're going to move up into some uh, different places and play some different voicings. But that first chord is an A chord. And remember, an A does not mean this. And an A does not mean this. It means much more. It means stuff like... That's an A. And so I want you to start thinking about things like that. And we're gonna, I'm going to give you an example of that very example and then and many others as we go through this. But I want you to start thinking about an A differently and a, a B minor differently. Start looking at the little pieces of chords. So let's start off with that A. Um, if I, the way that I started this, I played the A down in first position. I played the bottom uh, part of the chord, so five, four, and three, those three strings. And then went. So a little fill lick off of that A shape. Look at that fill. It's easy to play. We're going to use our ring finger and slide from 2nd fret to the 4th fret on the 5th string. And then 2nd fret, 4th string. There's 4, 2. And then we go up to the 2nd uh, fret, 3rd string. So all together. Now let's stop right there and just analyze that one thing. That's actually more awesome than you might think. So don't just let that kind of breeze past you. If you look at that and connect it to this chord shape, that's the power of this. So let's say we were playing a C now, but I'm using the A chord shape. See, there's my A chord. I just moved it up. I put my index finger down where the nut was. And now I can take that same lick. So now if, I'm if I want to use that lick, that's a great little fill. And it sounds awesome in just about any tempo. You can work that in. So, all right, there's the first one. Now we go to the B minor, and I'm thinking about the B minor here, using the A minor chord shape. So these three fingers are playing the A minor. We move it up two frets, we capo with our index finger, and we have the B minor. So, um, but instead of playing the chord, I went like this. Now what is that? Look at that. So that's middle finger on the third fret, second string, ring finger on the fourth fret, third string. I slid it up to uh, where my ring finger was on the sixth fret, did two of those, and then came back down uh, to this position. But if you're wondering what that is, that's just the two notes within the chord. So picture that chord, and then look at strings uh, two and three. These two notes. So you, could, you don't need to play the entire chord. It took me years and years to figure that out. When I would see a chord, I thought you had to get it as big as possible. And the truth is, you could play a, well, a single note doesn't really mean a chord, but if you play a couple of notes like that, like a double stop, it'd be a harmonized third, and it is part of the chord. So that's what that is. And then I came down here and played uh, strings two and three, uh, barred on the 2nd fret, and then 
back to that uh, initial starting point. And then my index finger goes down on the second fret, first string. Why that note? Well, that's the triad, the B minor triad. It's the top part of this chord. So that's why that made sense to me. That's how I'm able to really quickly see that stuff because I'm just picturing the chord shape. And so the, the better you get with uh, when it comes to improvising with picturing chord shapes, it's hard to do at first because you're still trying to get your bearings and even remember how to play B minors in different spots. But once you can see one there, up here, you can see these little triads of a B minor, you can start attaching fill licks to those uh, chord shapes. That's my whole thing. I mean, that's I'm able to play just about any style of music using that same premise. I don't care if it's jazz or country or blues. It's basic chord shapes and then connect something to them. If you don't have the chord shape, you're you're out, you're floating in, in thin air. For me, anyway, I don't really have a have my bearings. Okay, from the beginning. There's your A, B minor. Now it goes to an E. Now I could have just played an E there, but I went up to this position. And then a little fill there. So let's look at that. That's the E chord played uh, in this position. It's the same as the D chord shape. So you take your D chord and you go up two frets and play the top three strings. You're not hitting that fourth string. And in the tab, I think I slid into that third string and then played the rest of the chord. And then watch this. Really cool. Now this will be a great little takeaway. Let me show you how to play it first. So we're going to slide with both fingers crammed into the seventh fret here. One is on the fourth string and one is on the second string. And I'm using hybrid picking for this. So I'm picking on the fourth string and then I'm plucking with my ring finger on the second string. Played that and then I moved it into this position. So we have like uh, this position and then one like this where I've got my index finger on the 5th fret 2nd string, my middle finger is on the 6th fret 4th string. Now this also represents the E chord. I want you to pay attention to this because this is, I think, pretty powerful. So, some of you are going, wait, how is that an E chord? Because it's not that D shape and it's, well, if you think, going back to the cage system, if we look at our different voicings, if you play the C chord shape, but play the E chord, it looks like that, all right? Now if I look at strings four and two, that's what I end up with. So in my mind, making this chord, uh, especially if you're doing it quickly, it's hard to do. I mean, there's you're trying to cram all these fingers in, and if you're not used to doing that, that would really slow you down. But this, you can grab really easily, especially when you get comfortable with hybrid picking. So an E can be this, and then you can take that up two frets to the ninth fret. So the way I want you to think about this is you have two chord shapes that you're connecting when you do this. You have this shape, which is your A shape. So it's an E chord, but you're playing it up here. And you have your A shape, and then you have your C shape. They're both E chords. They're just played in different spots. So if you can picture your A shape, look at where my bar is whether you're using your pinky or your ring finger, but it's on the ninth fret, strings two and three. I'm sorry, strings two and four. Right? So you can now picture that and connect that double stop to this chord shape. So you got, and then you go down two frets, and then you got down to this chord shape. So hopefully a light bulb just went off for some of you when you're thinking about, oh, okay, now when I play an E chord, I've got all this stuff I can do, whether it be blues or country. Right? And, and it's all based on that same premise. The same thing, a little sidebar here, you could do down in first position. You got the exact same thing down here. And that would be connecting the E shape to the C shape. But we're on strings uh, one and three instead. But it's the same shape that we did down there. So now you've got it in two positions. So anyway, think about that and, and really explore just that one premise and try and switch it up, do it in a different key. In fact, pause the video and try playing that over a D and understand it. Once you can see that, it becomes a lot more meaningful. Okay, from the beginning, we have the A. 
B minor. E. Okay, now we go back to the A. And what I played was... I played an A sus, 4, to an A. Because it hung out on the A for a while, and that's one little thing that you can remember. If a song hangs out on a chord for a while, there's no you know definition of what a while is, but for, for a long period of time, you can play sus4 and get into it, or like a sus2. It's just a variant on that. So I went like this. Now, I'm thinking about the A chord here, using the E chord shape. That's where I'm at uh, visually and mentally, but I've got my ring finger on the 7th fret, 3rd string, and then I've got a bar here on the 5th fret, um, strings 1, 2, and 3, and I play strings 3, 1, back to 3, so, and then watch this, that's walking it down, 1, 2, 3, and then put my middle finger down on that 6th fret, 3rd string, and play the A triad right there, the top part of your A bar chord. Now that is powerful, just that one thing. Now anytime you're hanging out on the chord, you can picture that E chord shape. You can start doing creative stuff with that sus uh, four and then back to the main chord. So that's the first time through. Now we're gonna go through the same cycle of chords, A, B minor, and E. And what I played for the A this time was this. Now that may sound complicated, but it's super easy once you can picture this. Let me show you how to play it first, and then we'll connect it to something you know. So we got middle finger on the 9th fret 1st string, ring finger on the 10th fret 2nd string, and you're playing that little uh, double stop there, that harmony. Now I use my pinky for this to do a hammer on to the 10th fret 1st string, and then watch this. Easy. Strings 1 and 2 on the 7th fret, 1 and 2 on the 5th fret. So, now I'm going to come down here with my ring finger to the 7th fret 4th string, and then bar and play strings 2 and 3 on the 7th fret. So we have 4, 2, and 3. So, alright, and then... We do the hammer on, so that's barring the first three strings on the fifth fret. We're only playing strings two and three though. And hammering on to the sixth fret third string. That hammer on adds a lot. You could just play it straight, but when you do that, it just sort of gives it that bluesy thing where you got the minor third going into the major third. Now all of that was an A. So in my mind, that was, even though we were playing a lot of things, I wasn't thinking of it as separate things. I was thinking of, of all of that as an A. And back to what we were talking about a minute ago with uh, picturing the different chord shapes, I was picturing the A chord here, but I started off up here using the A chord, but played with a D chord shape. Just like we did when we played the E here, right? We're doing it up here. Now, if, you were, if we have our middle finger on the ninth fret first string, and we play that D chord shape. That's another voicing for an A chord. So when I played that, that's just out of that chord shape. It's just the first two strings. I could have played all three. It wouldn't, wouldn't have changed it that much, but I like to take little uh, fragments out of these chords. So that's all that was. And then we're just connecting it back to, the, to this chord shape. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for what you can do off of that uh, connecting the two shapes. And a lot of these little fills that I do anyway tend to be that. I don't know why I do that, but I tend to just try and connect chord shapes. All right, so then the song goes back to the B minor. And that's what we're going to learn. So now I'm in a different position on the neck. Before we were playing our B minor down here, now I'm thinking about it up here. So that's barring the seventh fret and doing like the E minor shape up here. So I, I play, but I didn't start on the seventh fret. I actually started on the fifth fret, strings one and two. And I do a hammer on. This is a great little, um, little lick that you can th think of and you can connect it back to this shape. That's how I do anyway. Uh, but we, what we do is we bar the first two strings, fifth fret, hammer onto the seventh fret, second string. And then back to the 5th fret, strings 1 and 2, and then 
ring finger on the seventh fret third string, sixth fret third string. So all together, that's the lick. And then watch this. I come up here, I bar the first four strings on the seventh fret. We're gonna play strings three and four, and I'm gonna hammer on to the ninth fret uh, fourth string. Now, what I'm doing here, that should make sense. That's your B minor chord, right? So I could have went. I could play whatever I want off of that shape there because I'm in the B minor neighborhood. You can think of it that way. So I'm going from this leg into the B minor shape. Now, this leg is an, a nice little extension off of uh, this chord shape. Whether you're playing a major chord or a minor chord, it doesn't matter. This works either way. And I got that from Robin Ford. I've seen Robin do that. And so if he's playing a, a blues, you know, major blues, he'll play that lick. Or if he's playing a minor, it works either way. So just remember that lick is an extension off that. Okay, so we have... Okay, now the song goes to the E. And I, what I played there... I already covered this. This is that... I'm playing off of the A chord shape. I'm playing that double stop strings 2 and 4, sliding in. And then down to this position. Why does that work? Because that's your E chord played from the C shape. So it's just strings two and four again. And then we come down here. All the way down to the A. And the A is strings four and two on the uh, second fret. Which makes sense because if you're playing your A bar chord, it's those two. Just like when we were playing the E, it's those two. Hopefully that's making sense. You're seeing we're just going from the E down to the A, but with a melody line. That's what's nice about these double stops is you can create a melody line. Now some of you are going to go, what's that? Well, that would be like a D chord. So it'd be kind of like, uh, it'd be the four chord of this chord, which is an old gospel thing. If you're playing like a hanging out on a chord, here, uh, so you go one to the four. Or to the four and back to the one. It's a nice little pivot. Um, I think that's what people call it. But that's what, when I played that, that would be like a pivot uh, off the D chord to get to the A. I didn't think of it that way. I was just thinking about walking it down. You know, so, but that's what it is. Okay, so that's what we have for part one. I'm gonna go ahead and play along with a slow version of the jam track. So you have one final version of everything we went through in context with the jam track. And then I'll see you in part two. And if you haven't subscribed to the Active Melody YouTube channel, I would encourage you to do that and then click that alert bell so you can be notified when I put out new lessons, which I do every week, uh, a couple of times a week actually. And then also check out premium membership, which I have at activemelody.com. It's very affordable and totally worth it, in my opinion. All right, we'll see you in part two. One, two, three, four. Thank you.